Hello hockey and basketball fans, my name is David. Thought I would uh, start this video at 6.10 on the morning of Sunday, 29th of January, North American Eastern Time, 3.10, North American Pacific Time. So thought I would do, see you about the power rankings from the Hockey Guy YouTube man. And you can see here, yeah, the Boston Bruins are in number one, but the most important thing is, we have Gedrick and Oilers, whose logo is very hard to see, at number 8 among all teams, at number 2 among Canadian teams. The Jets are, you know, third among Canadian teams. Calgary Flames are, well, haven't had the best weeks in the world. Blackhawks, wow. they just a very wildly inconsistent, so... And then we look at the bottom row. The remaining three Canadian teams, Sens, Habs, and Canucks, in order of uh, higher to lower. And, uh, yeah, it's a question of, well, will the Canucks get Bedard in the draft, you know, in the first round, or Adam Ventilli? There's no doubt that teams in the NHL, if they're going to do well, have to find draftees from rounds other than just the first. I mean, you know, you know those, you know those teams that you know, Stanley Cup contenders, still you know, Cup winners, have draftees from different rounds. And I also think of, you know, current active players on the on the ha roster, the Habs, Raphael Harvey Pinard, a winger. He is well, not even the fourth round. Wasn't drafted in the fourth round, and here we are. He uh, put up three points, two of them goals, against the Red Wings in an overtime loss. So yeah, good teams, you know, good age, you know, good teams in the NHL. At least those that get going playoff runs, you know, do find draftees from other than the first round, and that's something the Leafs haven't done very much of under Kyle Dubas, the GM. And I'll get to that in a moment. Yes, Leafs did drop in the power rankings put up by the Hockey Guy YouTube man from third to fourth. But it wasn't even the worst among Canadian teams. Oh, well. Yeah, well. I mean, the Jets was pretty dramatic from fourth to ninth. Wow. Pretty dramatic, folks. So, Canucks stay in the bottom row. You know, no surprise. It's been it was a mixed week. So, um, after the change of coach from Bruce Boudreaux to Rick, Rick Tockett, yeah, the Jets did get two wins, but they were against not so good teams. TV worse than them, and there aren't that many at this point in terms of um, points or point percentage. Yeah, what is there? first win was against Blackhawks, a team for which Colin Dillia. One of the two goalies at the NHL level for the Vancouver Canucks, but on a contract via the Abbey Abbotsford Canucks or Abbey Canucks, but in place, you know, in well, in place of Demko, who remains injured and with an unknown return, I believe he got to play his for, you know, that Delia got to play one of his former teams, uh, and uh, Delia's uh, American, like Demko. Just from a different part of California. Demko's from you know, San Diego area. Um, Dillia's from Rancho Cucamonga to the east of Los Angeles. Uh, well, close to, you know, basically in the Los Angeles metro area. Well, what can you do? It's, you get the goalies from where they come. I mean, they're, you know, I mean, it's, you know, for purposes of doing well or not, so it doesn't matter if your goalie is Canadian or, out, or other than Canadian. It's is he any good? And Canucks have had, you know, come see, come saw goaltending. But even with Demko, they had been doing well, well early on in the season. He allowed some uh, ugly goals against the Kraken. And Canes. They're on, you know, against Canes. It was a 3 2 regulation loss. Demko allowed two ugly goals that I could count. 
So, no surprise there. Canucks ended up, you know, I'm going to go kind of geographically, if I can, you know. Then we're going to move on to Calgary, to the Flames. Well, it's been a mixed week, so, yeah. I'm not completely sold on what, on on the, on any Flames playoff spirits, even if, even if they do. The lack of chemistry has affected them throughout the season. Well, weren't the acquisitions of Nazem Kadri as the center, John Uperto on the wing, and Mackenzie Weger on defense supposed to help? Yes. With Matt Kachuk having claimed to not have wanted to play for the Flames long term, well, why wouldn't Brad Living, the longtime GM, do something to try to get something out of Kachuk, of that Kachuk brother? Rather than just do nothing, see Kachuk walk for nothing in, well, in the final, you know, after the final season of his contract. Well, that's pretty, you know, I mean, the Flames, you know, still, you know, I haven't checked the standings, I have to see where they're at. <clears throat> I'm going to check the NHL standings. See where they're at. The Flames were in a playoff position as of Saturday. All right, so we're just going to see where the NHL standings are. See me a moment here. Just going to refresh the page. All right. All right. Looks like looks like I can't change the Wi-Fi, so. They do here. You can see here, the Leafs are way at the top. Sens and Habs are pretty much at this point competing for third for third last in the Eastern Conference. And when you go to the Jets, they've kind of been reeling. Surprised they're not four and six in the last ten, but they didn't get there. And yeah, the Canucks are way down at the bottom. Yeah. I mean they're they're not doing too well. Oh, Flames are knocked out. <laughs> also the Wild have uh, 58 points to the Avs. We have the Avs 57, so very tight. Flames have that many, and well, they were knocked out. So they're vulnerable. So the others have 60, but they're vulnerable too. I mean, very close to the top of the Pacific, but I mean, at this point, I see. Let me see here. So five points separate the Minnesota Wild from the Winnipeg Jets, and six the Avs from the Jets. So when it comes to yeah. Finally, able to get the settings to put the Wi-Fi back on, but basically, you know, when you look at the standings, yeah, Flames are kind of in and out of playoff spot. They're just they're not they're not making loads of traction. Kind of you know, trying to having trouble keeping uh, keeping up with the Joneses, figuratively speaking. 
So, yeah. And no others have been on the heater. Eight straight games to the point. It would be a win streak had it not been for that overtime loss to the Jets. Due to what Jamie McLennan, of uh, the uh, also co-host of 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 Overdrive 1050 on Toronto radio station TSN 1050, the late afternoon show, and the color commentator for Ottawa for Ottawa Senators games broadcast on TSN, so-called quote sloppy unquote play. Well, that was because of Evander Kane a very physical, physical winger who had been back for a few games, having had to appear in court in California over a bankruptcy matter. So, Kane was psh, not, you know, not doing too good. Well, now I thought I would geographically skip over to the Jets. And yes, Winnipeg Jets were grounded bigly by the Flyers at home. I was when there was a uh, you know, goal score, you know that first goal scored. I was in the washroom. I was in one of the washrooms in my condo suite. I had to go. Had to go, you know. So I missed watching that part of the game, but I you know got the highlights. But there's that first goal by the Flyers. Well, then I went to that, uh, you know, to that uh, that tablet to look at what had happened. There'd been a goal scored by the Flyers. Had really known if it was a home game for the Jets or a road game, but it seemed the cheers weren't there. I figured it was a home game for the Jets, and I was right. Ha! <laughs> These Jets were booed out of the building, and you look what happened. You know, I'm just gonna go to. Oh. All right, what did I do here? All right, so let's see here. What I'm going to do is throw in the meantime. Yeah, Jamie McLennan. That was from Wednesday Eastern Time. The others had played so sloppily that, you know, well, it was an overtime loss. And then we have another comment from. Mark Spector of Sportsnet, who claimed that yes, the Oilers had not taken the Blue Jackets seriously enough in, in that overtime loss. Again, the Oilers get a point. They have an eight-game point streak, which is nothing to sneeze at. But again, there's a very legitimate question about, indeed, right, putting that same thread where at least we're going to win another game without Austin Matthews. Because, let's face facts, ladies and gents, in January, the way that I've counted, I've counted three games. So, Leafs won by this margin against the Preds. Following night, the well, was at home. Following night, they lost by this margin to the Wings. And on Friday Eastern Time, they lost by... Well, this number of goals Sen scored... Number of goals Leaf scored. Is that good? No. Leafs have to be careful to not play down to inferior opponents. But that's what they've done too often this season. When I look at this um, tweet from very interesting tweet here.
So, credibility issues. So, yes. It's another case of of a front office that refuses to listen to, well, even if it doesn't defan, you know, to fans, but also to the feedback on the ground, on the ice. Not getting the job done often enough. Yeah, convinced it's ready to win a playoff series. Well, not quite. At least you'll be able to beat teams that are, you know, outside of the playoff spots, such as Sens and, uh... And this, ladies and gents, is the margin which leads to loss. And those, you know, Doom supporters don't have a lot of ammo to come back at. I mean, even regular season success is under threat. Yeah, a flawed plan. Poor drafting other than even within the first round. How about the improper use of analytics to... Yeah, about not drafting very well. Well, that was from um, two off seasons ago about analytics. So, what do I have here? Oh, yeah, so, yeah, the Leafs haven't done very well. And that's a problem. Maybe you could say, oh, you know, the coaching staff should have taken care of Murray, of the health of Matt Murray, the rather expensive backup at this point, you know, more than it did. But in the end, uh, I don't know, Aside from, you know, Murray aside, no, you know, not enough teammates of Ilya Samsonov, the starter for the game against the Sens at Scotiabank Arena, did enough to help him win that game. Provided only two goals to the Ottawa Senators' six. It was hard to blame Samsonov because he was kind of thrown the cold. Of course, he should have been prepared because goaltending is unpredictable and one goalie may not be very healthy. I'm not sure what's going to happen. I'm not sure who GM Dubas is going to give, you know, bring up from the Toronto Marlies or the AHL, but it's very clear that uh, you know it's going to be important to bring up like a backup to Samsonov because, because if Samsonov somehow gets hurt or it's pulled because the goal because you know, for whatever reason that there will be a backup ready to go. The question will be whether it'll be Eric Shogren, who's played who's played any given regular season game, that that any of him, Joseph Wall, and Keith Petrucelli have played. Petrucelli did play a game during the regular during the preseason. Didn't do very well. I'm not sure if that was why Keith never used Petrucelli before. You no, know, both Marine Samsonov had recovered from injuries. But it's just been the center's loss exposed. The defense not being very not being very good. And the lack of depth scoring. 
Lack of depth scoring has been a big problem for the Leafs. Yes, the Leafs only moved down one spot in the power rankings by posted by the Hockey Guy YouTube man. But, a kid, bigger concern for me is, can the Leafs score three or more goals a game on a consistent basis without Austin Matthews, a center, in the lineup? He's injured, so Leafs are going to have to get used to you know, playing well without Matthews. And the question is, will they have to go out and get acquire a more quality replacement than what they have in their system? That's going to be the key. Pontus Holmberg, who did play at center on Friday, didn't do very well. Just going to go... Back to that game on... Where do I go here? Oh. So I'm going to go to the scoreboard here. So Holmberg took two penalties. Adding up to six minutes, on average, three minutes per penalty. So it's kind of a mixed bag. Although the Leafs were able to kill off the high sticking double minor, an incredibly stupid penalty that Homework took, they weren't able to completely kill off the other. With Derek Brassard, at the 957 mark of the second period, putting the Senators up for good. And that was a bit over 90 seconds into the Homework penalty. So, what I would do is, is figure out how did Holmberg do as a center? He didn't do particularly well in the face-off uh, In the face-off, um, in the face-off circle, ending up winning five out of thirteen that he'd taken. That he ended up taking. And didn't really factor in very much. He had a giveaway. Had six penalty minutes. Two hits. And pretty flat. Didn't even have a strong goal. Ugh. Homework no good. Didn't generate offense. Didn't get the job done. Not sure what he drafted, but he wasn't very good. It's going to be clear he's going to need you know going to be he needed a replacement. Maybe he should be bumped to the fourth line. Or at least put on one of the wings. It's not like he played very well. So yes, yeah, so also with the Sens and the Habs, and well, kind of competing for, you know, which of the two Eastern teams ends up ahead. And yeah, it, it's it's you know it's, you know it would be wise to believe that the uh, 
Leafs will draft good players from more than just the first round. I'm not saying Leafs are going to get Connor Bedard, but <clears throat> but they need Leafs need to draft in other than just the first round. Because, I mean, under Dubas' GM, they've drafted very few NHL-ready players. And, you know, those players on the roster who are playing, a lot of them, you know, thanks to drafts by predecessors of Dubas. And, yeah. Things aren't looking too good. I'd say the Leafs have work to do. And can they get the job done? We shall see. But there's no doubt that these Leafs have a lot of work to do. Against the Capitals on Sunday and the Bruins on Wednesday, both at home, last two games before the All-Star break. They got work to do. There's no doubt that these Leafs have to find ways to beat teams without Austin Matthews in the lineup. Ladies and gents, the future of the Leafs without Austin Matthews isn't bright. The Leafs are going to have to find a way to win without him because eventually, if he if he if he does sign for the Leafs, he's eventually going to retire. And who's going to be there to replace him? That's where drafting comes in, so that the future is bright. But it doesn't look that way. The Leafs have consistently lost in the first in the opening round at effective after the 2003-04 season which was the last one that was played before a hard salary cap came in so yeah I definitely look forward to seeing the Leafs but now I'm going to go to the games to take place before the all-star break That feature Canadian teams. So there are two. Games overall. With the Caps, Leafs one, the only one to feature Canadian teams. Monday, it'll be a Jets home game, the last one. They play for the All-Star break. Sense and Habs will be back at it. We will be on TSN, as it usually is. We have the Leafs hosting the Bruins. And the first game to feature NHL teams back in action will be ne next week on Monday. We have two Canadian teams, the Flames and Canucks, in action. With the Canucks away against the Devils and the Flames away against the Rangers. So on separate Sportsnet channels, Flames on Sportsnet West and the Canucks on Sports Night Pacific. It kind of sucks that they are there, but this is what it is. Then we have on Tuesday among green teams, the orders in action against the wings. TV network to be determined. And then Wednesday, Canucks hosting no Canucks away from home against the Rangers. Kind of a repeat of the of the two thousand eleven Stanley Cup final. And on that Thursday we have the 
Flames and Oilers as respective away teams against the Wings and Flyers. Friday, we have the Leafs in Central Ohio playing the Blue Jackets. As the only Canadian team in action, Leafs will be among the last to have a game after the All-Star break. And then, oh boy, we have loads of games here. So, we have the Canucks Flames, Habs, Sens, Leafs, Jets in action. Do we have one, two, three, four? Orders and Senators, okay. One, two, three, four, five. So we have all seven Canadian teams in action in that first Saturday twelfth February will feature the Habs hosting the Oilers. And that is kind of it. For that's going to be kind of it for you know games to take place after the All Star break, but no later than the first weekend that follows said break. I look forward to seeing the Leafs in the postseason if they can find ways to win games without Austin Matthews in the lineup. They should do it. As long as they do it kind of like on the same similar pace, they get at least two thirds of the available points, they should get in. Likely the, only, likely the only question will be whether the Leafs finish second or third in the Atlantic, given how far ahead the Bruins are in terms of first. So, and also that even if the Leafs and other, you know, in terms of a, you know, in terms of a counter argument to old oh, Leafs have to finish first so they can avoid. Facing the Bruins Panthers, you know, Bruins, uh, Bruins and Lightning, I say this. How well did the Leafs do when they finished first in the North Division two seasons ago? Well, in the both season, Leafs were ahead by this margin against the Habs, but ended up losing by this margin. So that kind of torpedoes the argument that Oh, the Leafs have to finish in the first in their division or else they won't get far in the postseason. Well, the Leafs haven't gotten, haven't won a playoff series, however high or low in their division they've ever finished, following the 2003-04 season. That's the thing. So, yes, it'd be nice to have home ice advantage. But also, the Leafs have done better away from home than at home, proportionately terms of percentage of games won. <clears throat> so, clearly, I definitely look forward to seeing how Leafs do. But when it comes to Canadian teams, I'm going to summarize it in this tweet from late Saturday or early Sunday Eastern time. So, so, this is basically a tweet that I wrote, and so, I see as the Oilers as most likely to see playoff action among them, the Flames, and Jets. That's very telling, because they're thinking... Oh, Jets looks pretty secure. As long as they got their act together. And then three losses over the last four. 
and all those losses have incurred in regulation. In a nutshell, a 1-3-0-0 win, regulation loss, overtime loss, shootout loss record to end the week, to end the previous week. So, there you go. A win and three losses in a row, all in regulation. That's not sustainable. Jets could be out of a playoff spot in no time at all. If they continue that way, perhaps the All-Star break will provide the break that the Jets need. The Leafs end later than any of the Canadian team, any of the remaining Canadian teams do. But again, let's face facts. These Leafs have work to do. And and you know there definitely is pressure to make changes. There you know there probably will be even more should the Leafs lose their 2023 first round series. And given the way the Leafs have played, I'm not convinced they're going to win their first, you know, their upcoming first round playoff series. But again, the question will be whether this season, unlike last, either GM Dubas or President Shanahan will be given the boot. Well, Dubas's existing contract as GM of the Leafs is is going to be ending during the 2023 offseason. Question will be whether Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment, or more specifically the board of that entity that owns the Leafs, Raptors, and a few other Ontario sports teams, will renew, will give Dubas another contract. It's certainly premature to do so. Because Dubas has not won a playoff series. But fault for lack of oversight of Dubas has been, well, President Shanahan, a Hall of Famer, who has, you know, basically rested on his laurels and not done adequate oversight of Dubas. That's not acceptable. We'll have to see what happens, but certainly the drafting has to be a lot better. And the question will be, I mean, what changes are made to the scouting department? Because scouting players is not exact science, but it has to be done right for a team to have a chance of not just winning a playoff series or two, but going for the Stanley Cup. That ought to be the goal for the Leafs. The Leafs have the talent to get them there. The problem is the execution has been way off. Has been so far off that the Leafs have gotten into the postseason rather easily, but when it's coming to doing well in the postseason, different story altogether. On that note, I'm going to say, hope you have a good weekend, and go Leafs go.